The report that we're the report that we're issuing today is available on the web at onmay12.org. It's also available on Facebook, facebook.com slash onmay12. I'd like to introduce Tammy Miller, a leader of the city's unionized daycare providers at UFT. Over the last several years, the mayor has launched an all-out assault on early childhood services. His decision to drastically reduce Head Start funding while at the same time close daycare centers was and still is a recipe for disaster for the working class men and women of New York City. The, the mayor's decision to sit idly by as the millionaire's tax is expected to sunset this December further illustrates that he is once again sticking up for his rich friends while not caring about the working class men and women of New York City yeah, right. and the children right. of New York City. That's right. Even in this economic crisis, the attempt to resolve some of the city's financial budget deficit on the backs of poor, that on the right. backs of working class, on the backs of infants and toddlers and children who need help with homework is unacceptable. unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Protect our kids. Protect them now. Now more than ever before, the city must support child care programs. Why? Ask me why. Why? Why? Because they support working class people. Yeah. Ask me why. Why? So working class people can work. Yeah. Ask me why. Why? So working class people can pay taxes. Ask me why. Why? Apparently so that his Wall Street friends could live rich and have a peaceful life. That ain't right. That's that ain't not right. right. That ain't right. Our that ain't message right. is clear. We will not accept it. Families, parents, children, all of the advocate world, all of the early childhood educators, we will not allow this mayor or any other rich mayor to make the issue about him and his wealthy friends. The issue is our future. Who are the future? Our children. So we will stand with all the parents of New York City. Thank you. Coalition is an amazing coming together of the most politically engaged and uh, effective unions from around the city, community groups from all over the city, and frontline nonprofit service providers. We are proud that the Human Services Council is part of this campaign. Their Who Cares I Do campaign has outlined the damage in state cuts, city cuts all the way along the line. There are dozens and dozens of organizations that have been brought together in this coalition, and Michael Stoller is the executive director of the Human Services Council. <laughs> What is happening to this country? When did the poor become the enemy? I'm a product of the public schools. When did the teachers become the enemy? What the hell is going on here? Something is wrong in this country, and we're going to stop it here in New York City. The mayor is proposing a half a billion dollars cuts to human services. You know what human services are? My father, God bless, is 87 years old. He goes to his senior center up the block. Will he die if he, God forbid, if they close it? No. But will he miss it? the meal, the socialization? Yes. How many NCIS reruns can you watch in a day? Disrespect. <laughs> exactly. These are people who've paid their dues. The folks talked about the working people who use the daycare. These are the people who are playing by the rules. They're getting the, getting the jobs, they're paying the tax, they're doing what the government, the society says they should do. Why are they the ones who did not cause this mess paying for it? It's wrong. So what we're asking, as Michael said, human service providers, the ones who take care of the elderly and the kids and the immigrants, the people who are physically ill or mentally ill, have suffered since this fiscal crisis began cuts in our contracts of between 20 and 50%. Now that's cuts in the money, not cuts in what we're supposed to do. The six big banks have $600 million in contracts. I didn't notice in the newspapers any cuts to them. 
Why are the ones who caused the crisis benefiting from it while we're paying? Not right. And that's the questions we want to answer, and that's why I support Who Cares I Do, and why I'm going to be there May 12th, and I hope to see you all there. Thank you. We've been joined by a remarkable array of progressive leaders from the city council. Melissa Mark Beverito, Mark Jackson, uh, Robert Jackson, uh, Brad Lander, Daniel Drum, Jumani Williams. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Jackson. That's okay. <laughs> um, I had to go by Mark Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. It's on my head. Um, I, I, I would like them each to say a few words. I want to ask the members of the press if there are any detailed questions at this point. If not, I would like to ask each one of them to say a couple words about the city budget process and our report. Okay? Thank you. One minute. All right. Uh, I'm Council Member Melissa Murphy Verito, and I want to say that this is an unbelievably inspiring coalition about taking back our city and taking right. back our democracy. There we go. This dollar bill is more than what many corporations have paid in corporate taxes. Is that right? Right. We have all paid more in personal taxes than these corporations have paid. So what we need from this mayor is the moral courage and the moral leadership to not only send the message about what needs to happen at the national level, because we do need to close those corporate loopholes as well, but at the state level in terms of reinstating the millionaire's tax, and at the city level to have the moral courage to do what needs to be done to take back our government. This is about us and who we represent. This is not about the multimillionaires, and this is not about the technocrats. This is about the working class, the working poor. And this summary and this budget is a people's budget. The same way the Progressive Caucus and the Congress presented a people's budget. This is about how we get services back to those that need it. So I want to thank everyone that has been part of this. I look forward to May 12th. Everyone that sees this video, anyone that hears this, needs to be present on May 12th. Go out, rally. We need to take our government back. Councilmember Robert Jackson. I say to you, I say to you, I will be there on, Mar on, a on May 12th, marching with New York Communities for Change in order to fight for a progressive budget. I say to you that I was up in Albany with the City Council, with our Speaker Christine Quinn and others, asking for our fair share for New York City, for our $300 million of aid to municipality, which they cut out totally, for the, for the millionaire's tax, which will bring in one full year, five billion dollars. That's right. And let me say this to you, as the chair of the Education Committee, as a co-chair of the New York City Council's Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, and we have officers here, we support New York Communities for Change trying to bring about a safety net for those people that are in need. And I say to all of you that it's important that we, in coming up in this executive budget hearings, which start May 12th, it's about choices and priorities. Right. Yeah. And That's the right. choices and priorities are about making sure that the average New Yorker doesn't lose their home, yeah. have yeah. a job, yeah. have health insurance, yeah. the basic necessity to survive. And so I support uh, this march to Wall Street on May 12th and New York Communities for Change. Make the right choice. Yeah.